the uh, regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Monday, uh, April 15, 2013. In lieu of an invocation tonight, I'd like to ask that we all rise for a brief moment of silence in memory of those who died in the tragic events surrounding the Boston Marathon today. Thank you. Alderman Frightendall, would you lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask the city clerk to please call the roll. Brown? Here. Clark? Here. Atac? Here. Stark? Here. Chanzit? Here. Wolf? Here. Sparks? Here. Alderman O'Brien is absent. Alderman Dietz is absent. Jungles? Here. Volk? Here. Frydendahl? Here. Leva? Here. Tenuta? Here. Let the record reflect that 12 of the 14 elected aldermen are present in the county for this evening's meeting. Do we have Alderman Dietz on the phone? Do we know? Okay. I need a motion to allow Alderman Dietz to attend the meeting via the telephone. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Chanzit, second by Alderman Stark for the allowance of Alderman Deet to attend the meeting by the telephone. Clerk, call the roll. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Sparks? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Motion to allow Alderman Deet to attend by the phone is approved. Uh, 12 yes, no noes, one absent, two, two, two absent, now one only absent. No one. <laughs> Alderman Dietz, you're on the line. You were there? <laughs> Where are you at tonight, Alderman Dietz? Okay. Well, thank you for uh, your attendance. Okay, moving then to Item number four, which are items to be removed, added, or changed on the agenda. Alderman Sparks is Vice Chairman of uh, Government Services. Would you present this, please? Uh, we have one item to change. Since there are two number 10s on the agenda, the second 10, Ordinance 13-17, will become 10A. I move we accept it as corrected. Your Honor. Again. Okay. We have a motion by Alderman. Are you you want to make another comment? I was actually going to make a motion. Uh, uh, given some discussions I've had recently over the last uh, couple of weeks, I want to know if we could add a brief discussion uh, regarding the uh, ARCH discussion that we voted on at the last meeting. Okay, why don't we put that then as 16, <coughs> as under 16, would that fit? Okay. Thank you. And we'll do that first off when we get there. Anybody else? Do I make your motion, Alderman? Okay. Um, we're changing the second 10 to 10A and we're adding ARCH under other business under 16. I move we accept it as changed. Second. Moved by Alderman Sparks. Second by Alderman Chanzit for the changes on the agenda. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Sparks? Aye. Dietz? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Changes to the agenda are approved. 13 yes, no noes, one absent. Moving then to the presentation of tonight's consent agenda, Alderman Sparks is Vice Chairman of Governmental Services. Would you present this, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Consent agenda reads as follows. To accept and place on file item A, Historic Preservation Commission minutes for March 25, 2013, Item B, Plan Commission Minutes for March 20th, 2013. Item C, March 2013 Building Report. For approvals, we have Item D, April 12th, 2013 Payroll, an amount of $769,794.58. Item E, April 12th, 2013 Payables, an amount of $1,265,271.14. And item F, the City Council minutes for October 2nd and November 6, 2006, and March 18th, 2013. I move we accept the consent agenda as read. Second. 
Moved by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Frightendorf for the approval of the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? Clerk, call the roll. Sparks? Aye. Jeets? Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Consent agenda is approved. 13 yes, no no's, one absent. Did I get that wrong? I heard a, a second. Was it? All, it was. Excuse me. It's Alderman Levo seconded that. Ventriloquism. Okay. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> the voices came from that direction, and it's. <laughs> all right. Moving then to item number six, which is proclamation for Loyalty Day. Alderman Sparks, would you present this, please? Thank you, Your Honor. The proclamation reads: Whereas the community of Batavia is honored and blessed to once more host the annual Loyalty Day parade, which has been sponsored by the. Batavia Veterans of Foreign Wars Post number 1197 and its ladies and men's auxiliaries for over two decades of civic life. And whereas the event serves to annually instill and reinforce the longstanding community commitment towards patriotism, volunteerism, and the vibrancy of the American spirit. And whereas the members of the, BF, the Batavia VFW Post number 1197 and its ladies and men's auxiliaries annually donate thousands of hours and thousands of dollars to plan, organize, and produce the Loyalty Day Parade, which has won the hearts and admiration of residents from throughout the greater Fox Valley and beyond. And whereas the VFW Post number 1197 has utilized the theme of the Loyalty Day Parade to promote a variety of community concerns and causes, including drug awareness, stranger danger, public safety, religious understanding, business development, public action, and American patriotism. And whereas the annual Loyalty Day Parade has become a civic highlight and has written for itself a proud chapter of Batavia history that serves to remind and enlighten all his citizens as to the need to illustrate our love of freedom, support for our nation and its institutions and commitment to the values which surround the American dream. Now therefore, I, Jeffrey D. Schelke, Mayor of the City of Batavia, Illinois, with approval by the vote of the City Council, do hereby proclaim that Sunday, May 5th, 2013, shall be known throughout all of Batavia as the Loyalty Day. And by the signing of this proclamation, do hereby encourage all residents of our town to attend and participate in the festivities and significance of this most meaningful community event. Signed, Jeffrey D. Schelke, Mayor. Second. Make a motion. We accept the proclamation. Moved by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Wolf for the approval of the proclamation. A clerk called the roll. Sparks? Aye. Deeds? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. <clears throat> Motions approved 13 yes, no no's, none absent. We're very honored tonight to have uh, Carl Dinwiddie with us from Batavia VFW Post 1197. And Carl, it's my honor to present to you a copy of the proclamation. And we wish you and the Post the very best weather this year, if nothing else. <laughs> but thank you for your continued efforts to re keep this tradition going. Would you like to make any comments about the parade? Well, <laughs> you want to make some? <laughs> 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 I've been on the Loyalty Day Parade Committee for what is it now, 15 years, something like that. Anyway, um, this parade couldn't go off without a lot of volunteers and a lot of effort on the part of everyone else. Right now, we're short a couple of convertibles, so if you know anybody who has a convertible who wants to drive it in the parade, please have them get a hold of me. My number's in the book, or call the VFW, they'll get a hold of me. And if any of you want to volunteer at the, at the VFW before during and after the parade, we can sure use the help. Again, the uh, post number is 630-879-9630. And if you want to be in the parade, we encourage you to do that. You can get an application off the, the website at bataviavfw1197.org. Go to Loyalty Day Parade, and you can pull the application down. If you don't have access to the internet, you can call the post and we'll get you an application or you can go down to the post and they'll give you an application. They have to be in by the 20th. Anybody who puts an application in after the 20th ends up at the end of the parade, hopefully not behind the Clydesdales. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne.
our next proclamation is for Bicycle Month, Alderman Sparks. Thank you, Your Honor. Proclamation reads as follows. Whereas, for more than a century, the bicycle has become an important part of the lives of most Americans. And whereas today millions of Americans engage in bicycling because it is a viable and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent form of fitness and provides quality family recreation. And whereas the education of cyclists and motorists as to the proper and safe operation of bicycles is important to ensure the safety and comfort of all users. And whereas the League of American Bicyclists and independent cyclists throughout our state are promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety education in an effort to reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities for all. Now therefore, I, Jeffrey D. Schelke, Mayor of the City of Batavia, Illinois, do hereby proclaim May 2013 as Bike Month throughout the city and encourage all Batavians to recognize the importance of bicycle safety and be more aware of cyclists on our streets and highways. Signed, Jeffrey D. Schelke, Mayor. I move we accept the proclamation. Move by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Stark, I guess. It's a tie. Tie. Uh, for the approval of the proclamation, court call the roll. Sparks? Aye. Deeds? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Proclamation is approved 13 yes, no no's, one absent. Do I have somebody here from the Bicycle Commission? I'm looking around here and I don't know if I see anybody, so we'll save that one and give it to them. The next one is for Arbor Day. Alderman Sparks. Thank you again. The proclamation reads as follows. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper and wood for our homes, fuel for our fires and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal, and whereas Batavia has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting ways, now I therefore Jeffrey D. Schelke, Mayor of the City of Batavia, Illinois, do hereby proclaim Friday, April 26, 2013, as Arbor Day. The City of Batavia and urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of this and future generations on the 15th day of April, 2013. Signed, Jeffrey D. Schelke, Mayor. I move we accept the proclamation. Second. Moved by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Wolf. Uh, Kirk, call the roll. Sparks? Aye. Dietz? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Motion for the approval is approved 13 yes, no no's, one absent. All right. Gary Homer, Public Works Director, is here and copy of this. And do you want to make some comments about Arbor Day? <laughs> Um, as we have been doing for the past several years, we will be planting a memorial tree on Arbor Day. Uh, this year's tree will be, honor of the for will be in honor of the former Alderman uh, Beckman. It will be done on Friday, April 26th. Uh, the time and location uh, will be finalized by the end of this week, and if anyone's interested in participating, they can call our streets division, which is 454-2400, again, in honor of uh, former Alderman Beckman. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to item number nine, which is the Main Street Minute. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Eckert. I'm on the Board of Directors for Batavia Main Street, and I'm here to give you our March Main Street Minute. Uh, Main Street had 83 volunteers donate 189 hours for planning, meetings, programs, and events in March. 
In February, Limestone Coffee and Tea officially opened its doors at its new location on Wilson Street in downtown Batavia. We've had some good successes uh, recently that I'd like to share. This week, Batavia Main Street has joined other Main Street communities across the nation to be a part of the National Main Street Conference. Since communities have come to Batavia to ask about success of our economic development, Batavia Main Street will present and speak at the conference to share the successes of the 2012 Batavia Broker Tour as a low-cost program with high impact. Batavia Main Street was also selected to speak on a panel for the Midwest Urban District Forum, co-sponsored by International Downtown Association and Downtown Evanston, to discuss the success of downtown Batavia in arts and creative placemaking. The session will be held May 20th and 21st and is called Cultural and Economic Development Through Community-Based Artistic Partnerships and will touch on public-private partnerships and creating a cultural hub in downtown Batavia. Looking ahead, the community garden is signing up volunteers for the 2013 season. It's that time. Come on your own or with a group to learn about the garden and help provide a great harvest for the Batavia Interfaith Food Pantry. And save the date for Cocktails on Clark. It's gonna be Saturday, May 18th at 7 p.m. Enjoy live music, appetizers, refreshments, auction, and a s'mores bar. Tickets are only $25 and can be purchased online at our website, downtownbatavia.com. Proceeds benefit Batavia Main Street's mission to promote and revitalize downtown. A um, Couple other things I wanted to mention were the farmer's market. Uh, we're gearing up for that and still taking applications. So if you or somebody you know would like to be a vendor with us, please contact us. And we also have a green walk coming up on June 15th. Um, and again, if you're a business uh, interested in being part of that event, please let us know. We're taking applications for that as well. For more information about downtown Batavia or upcoming events, please visit the Batavia Main Street website or call us at 630-761-3528. Any questions or comments? Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, moving to item number 10, I'm going to ask uh, Chief Dykey if he would come forward and do the uh, introductions, and I'll do the swearing in. So, so. Good evening. Tonight we have four people to swear in, and all four of them are from either different ranks or different parts of the organization. So first off, we'll do uh, the swearing in for a new paid on call. His name is Jeffrey Gove. Uh, Jeffrey has numerous uh, certificates, including Firefighter 3 and an EMT, and he is a full-time firefighter on the Des Plaines Fire Department. He lives in North Aurora. Jeffrey? Thank you. Thank you. From Bill. Jeffrey, if you come forward here so we can see on TV, you'd stand right there. Just right, right there. Just raise, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jeffrey Grove. I, Jeffrey Grove. Having been appointed. Having been appointed. To the position of paid on call firefighter. To the position of paid on call firefighter. For the city of Batavia. For the city of Batavia. In the counties of Kane and DuPage. In the counties of Kane and DuPage. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. Constitution of the state of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the position of paid on call firefighter. Of the position of paid on call firefighter. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Thank you. The next uh, person, we had a retirement earlier this uh, earlier this month of uh, Battalion Chief Randy Zies, and so with that retirement, we have a movement through the ranks. And so uh, the next one will be a new firefighter on the department. Although he's not completely new, he's been a paid on call with the Batavia Fire Department since 1997. Uh, his name is Brian D. Nicola. He lives here in Batavia. He's a certified firefighter three and a paramedic. Brian, could you come forward?
Sure, sure. <clears throat> Who would you like to have pin your badge on? Uh, Jen, you want to come up? <laughs> well, Jen's making her way. I just want to say I'm very pleased that uh, we brought Brian D. Nicola back to the Batavia Fire Department. Uh, I remember him when he was in high school and you were a cadet in the Batavia Fire Department. So he's kind of gone through the ranks here and uh, gone away for a while, but we're very pleased to have you back. So if you'd raise your right hand and repeat after me, I, Brian D. Nicola, I, Brian D. Nicola having, been appointed having been appointed to the position of full-time firefighter, position of full -time firefighter with, the with the Batavia Fire Department in the cities of, and the counties of Kane and DuPage, to solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of full-time firefighter paramedic with the Batavia Fire Department to the best of my ability. Congratulations. next person to be sworn in is John Lucas. He is a full-time firefighter and he'll be uh, sworn in as a lieutenant. He is the next on the lieutenant's list. Uh, he's a certified firefighter three, a fire officer two, and a fire service instructor two, as well as a paramedic. John? John has been here since 2006. Let me just uh, <clears throat> share a little story about John. Uh, as many of you know, I have the uh, opportunity to travel around and visit a lot of fire departments in my life. And in the last few years, I've been in the New Lenox Fire Department twice. And in both times, I've run into different chiefs who told me that their goal was to bring John Lucas back to the New Lenox Fire Department. And I, I'm glad to see that we never let that happen. So uh, we're very, very pleased that uh, we have John is now being promoted to lieutenant. So. With that being said, if you'd raise your right hand and repeat after me, I, John Lucas, I, John Lucas having, been appointed, having been appointed to the position of lieutenant, the position of lieutenant with the Batavia Fire Department in the city of Batavia in the counties of Kane and DuPage to solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of lieutenant with the Batavia Fire Department to the best of my ability. Congratulations. All right, the last one is uh, Sean Stevens. He is uh, Lieutenant Sean Stevens. He is being promoted to battalion chief. He has been with the fire department for uh, 20, over 25 years. He started with us in 1987 uh, as a paid on call firefighter and became a full-time firefighter in 1992. He was promoted to lieutenant in 2002. Well, as the chief has just said, uh, Sean's been with us for about 25 years, and he's got a lot of war stories he could tell, but I think probably one of the things I remember most about him was is that after the, the terrible actions of, De of September 11th, uh, uh, 19, 2001, uh, you went to New York City and worked in the New York City at the World Trade Center after the disaster for a couple weeks, wasn't it? 
10 days. And so I think that speaks miles about uh, what Sean's career in fire service has been all about. And uh, think back to that, that terrible day in September 2001 when all that happened and all kinds of people throughout the country rose and responded to help and Sean was one of them who came from Batavia. So I think that's memorable in your career. If you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Sean Stevens, I, Sean Stevens. Having, been appointed having been appointed to the position of battalion chief with the City of Batavia Fire Department, with the city of Fire Department. in the counties of Kane and DuPage, to solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of Battalion Chief with the Batavia Fire Department to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Okay, we will move then to item number 10 on the agenda. 10A. 10, 10A, oh, no, 10 first. We got to do 10, don't we? 10A. We had two 10s. Oh, you had two, okay, 10A, which is ordinance 13-17, an ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed $10 million in general obligation refund, refunding bonds series 2013 of the city of Batavia and the counties of Canaan, DuPage, Illinois authorizing designated officers to sell said bonds for the execution of a bond order and providing for a levy and collection of direct annual tax for the payment and principal of said bonds. Alderman Sparks, you have this one? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, the City of Batavia has an opportunity to refund debt issued in 2001 for the Colonial Village lift station and improvements to the wastewater treatment plan and debt issued in 2005 to fund the construction of the Crosstown Water Main. These improvements were funded with low interest IEPA loans. The city is in a position that we can issue $9,230,000 in general obligation bonds to replace those loans and achieve a savings currently estimated at $249,000 over the remaining life of the loans with the present value savings of $272,000. The savings includes the cost to issue the bonds. Although we'll be issuing general obligation bonds, the payments of the bonds will continue to be made from the water and wastewater revenues. An abatement of the tax will be done each year. There will be no taxes collected from the bonds and the savings will be realized by the, the ratepayers in each utility. I move that we accept ordinance 13-17. Moved by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Leva for the approval of Ordinance 13-17. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Sparks? Aye. Deeds? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendal? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Ordinance 13-17 is a passed uh, 13 yes, no no's, one absent. Okay, moving to item number 10, or excuse me, to item number 11, which is resolution 13-55-R, approving solid waste services contract with advanced disposal services. Uh, who's got this one? Alderman Volk, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Our current solid waste contract with Allied Rice, formerly Veolia, formerly Onyx, ends June 30th. Staff has sent out requests for bids to five firms. Three firms responded with very competitive bids. Three options were considered. Keeping the same sticker in a recycling bin, keeping a sticker system and replacing the recycling bins with toters, or going to a toter system for both trash and recycling. After analyzing the costs and considering the types of complaints we get about trash, the City Services Committee decided that using toters for recycling would solve most of these problems. Given that Allied Waste has the lowest sticker prices for full stickers, half bags, and a free 65-gallon recycling toter, 
In fact, it was agreed if we change the pickup dates from Monday, Thursday, and Friday to Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the sticker prices will be actually lower than they are now. Residents will have a choice of a 35, 65, or 95 gallon recycler toter. We have some on displays over on that part of the room, both the recycling toters and the standard bin that everyone has or has several of, if you're like me. A typical bin holds approximately 20 gallons. So if you put out one or two recycling bins a week, a 35 gallon toter will do. If you put out three or four recycling bins, then a 65 or perhaps even a 95 gallon toter is appropriate. Allied will be contacting residents very soon, requesting what size recycling toter they want. You will be able to keep the bins that you have if you wish, or Allied will have a third party pick them up and they will be recycled. There will be a list provided on the cart for what is acceptable and what is not. <coughs> there will be a sticker in Boston plastic of a list of yes and no items you can put in the recycling toter. If residents want to make a change in the recycling cart, they can do this at any time. I know this will be quite traumatic for many people. Batavians don't do well with change, but it will lower our prices. We will work to divide the town into eight zones for the changeover of recycling bins and toters. Each zone will take about a day to complete and deliveries so that it'll be about eight working days to get it all done. And again, as I said, it'll be a third party firm that will take care of this. There'll be more information available from, directly from Allied on the city website and uncertain at the next several city council meetings. Uh, so given that, I move for passage of Resolution 1355R, authorizing the mayor to sign the solid waste contract with Allied Waste. Second. Moved by Alderman Volk, second by Alderman Leva for the approval of Resolution 13-55-R, the, approving the solid waste services contract with Advanced Disposal Services. Any discussion? Alderman Spark. Um, are we still allowed to use the small rectangular ones we have at no cost, or do we have to move in? No, we will move to the toters. So we have to pay yes. for recyclables? No, no, you're not paying for recyclables at all. But you're, you're paying for the toter. No. no, the toter is free. We're just exchanging the recycling bins for free toters. There's no cost to that. You will still put your trash out in your own trash can, container, bag, and you'll buy a sticker just like you always are doing. Or if you're like me, you just get a half bag because I don't generate that much trash. For trash, but yes. recyclables will not. Recyclables are totally free. It's instead of using the 20 gallon bins, there will just be the 35, 60, or 95 gallon toter. You will At not no be cost. charged for that. Okay. At no cost. Just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Jim, is it just um, instead of having to stop and empty four um, individual recycling bins, it's just easier for them to empty just one bigger one? There's a lifting fixture on the side of the toters and the, the person driving the truck doesn't have to pick them up. The future of waste pickup will be toters. Eventually there'll be toters for both trash and recycling. That's just the way they're going to do it because it reduces labor costs. And as we all know, labor is the most expensive part of any operation. So this allows them to do more with less people and avoid medical complications and liability issues and all the other stuff that goes with it. That's why they can drive the price down a few cents per sticker. Thank you. Palmer Clark. I, let's say you fill up your toter, recycling toter, and you put the other bin out, would they even pick that up? I'm just, they would, thank you. Uh, I'm not, ex okay, I, I'm getting private communication here. Again, there will be more details on the website, and as the next two months go by, there will be information. We'll probably put flyers in the utility bills trying to alert people. It's going to be different. The dates will be different. That will be a problem, but people will get over it. And Allied will continue to honor the stickers that they're selling now. Oh. I think the toters are a good idea. They have a lid on them. It will help because windy days are a joke with the recycle bins. So. Alderman Leva? One of the reasons we're going to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from Monday, Thursday, Friday was that um, there's an opportunity to bring Geneva into the same or similar program, which will increase the waste going through the waste transfer station, increasing our revenues as well. You know, I just want to say an appreciation to uh, Advanced Disposal for helping us kind of come up with this idea of the toters because one of the things I will 
to tell you is, is that it is not uncommon for the city to get calls on garbage day, specifically of people calling to complain about the recycling, current recycling bins and that and some of their neighbors way over pack the bins. And as has already been said on windy days, we get a lot of stuff blowing out of the bins and blowing into their neighbors and down the street and whatever. So it's, a, it's been a kind of a problematic issue for us for some time. I know a couple of times, uh, City crews even went out and picked up some bins that were way overpacked and kind of fell into the street and stuff was blowing all over the place. So I think this is going to help quite a bit and certainly the, the ease in which you can push them out to the curb I think is going to be a welcome uh, facility that a lot of people in town will appreciate having that opportunity. So I thank you for your in ingenuity in helping us kind of deal with an issue that's kind of growing with the passage of time. You know, it's encouraging to see the number of people that want to recycle, and hopefully uh, this will encourage them to recycle. But right now, the, the bins that we have are, are limited as to their size, and to somebody that really wants to be a serious recycler, uh, they overflow them, and that's when the problems start occurring. I think it's going to be hard to overflow these. So I'd encourage the heavy recyclers to take the bigger bin because uh, that will be, I think, something that many people will use. So I just wanted to publicly thank Advanced Disposal for your help in that. Any other comments? Clerk, call the roll. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Sparks? Aye. Dietz? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Motion's approved. 13 yes, no no's, one absent. Moving to item number 12, which is resolution 13-63-R, <coughs> budget amendment for funding the position of uh, ESDA manager. Who's got this one? Alderman Sparks. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, both items uh, 12 and 13 have to do with uh, providing a monthly wage for the ESDA manager. Um, Ordinance 1320 and Resolution 1363 are provide a monthly wage of $812.33 to the ESDA manager. Because of the reorganization of ESDA and the uncertainty of the ESDA director's position during the budget process, the ESDA director's monthly wage was left out of our 2013 budget. Now that the reorganization of ESDA has occurred, it's recommended that the wage be reinstated for the newly created position of the ESDA manager. The ESDA manager will manage the ESDA volunteers, ensure the readiness of the emergency operations center, and report directly to the fire chief ESDA coordinator. Uh, just to note that this is the same amount that was in the budget last year. It hasn't been increased at all. So the first part of this is the resolution 13-63-R budget amendment for the funding of the ESDA manager. I move we pass resolution 1363-R. Moved by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Leva for the approval of Resolution 13-63-R. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Sparks? Aye. Dietz? Aye. Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Resolution 13-63-R is approved. 13 yes, no no's, one absent. Moving then to item number 13, which is ordinance 13-20, an ordinance amending the 2013 wage and salaries for non-collectively bargained employees. Alderman Sparks. Thank you. This is a second part of this uh, deal. Um, what this is doing is amending the 2013 wage and salaries so we can enter this amount into it. Um, basically, Self-explanatory, I move we pass ordinance 13-20 amending the 2013 wages and salaries for non-collectively bargained employees and budget amendment. Second. Moved by Alderman Sparks, second by Alderman Leva for the approval of ordinance 13-20, uh, um, ordinance amending the 2013 wage and salaries for non-collectively bargained employees. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll. Sparks. Aye. Dietz. Alderman Deeds? I think we lost him. Victor. <laughs> <laughs> Jungles? Aye. Volk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atec? Aye. Stark? Aye. Chanzit? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Ordinance 13 20 is approved. 12 yes, no no's, two absent. 
Okay, moving to item number 14, which is the administrator's report. Mr. McGrath. Thanks, Mayor. A uh, lot coming up because it's spring construction season. Uh, the, uh, as you know, the Wilson Street contract, uh, Wilson Streetscape contract has been uh, finally approved by the state, signed off on by the uh, low bidder. And uh, if uh, people who are here tonight would like to take a look at it, the uh, final design is outside in the hallway. There's a public open house on Tuesday, April 30th, where people can get more details of exactly how the project is, is uh, going to run. There's an extensive uh, kind of a communication system set up, including e-blasts, door-to-door um, -door mailers for that, especially the uh, businesses in that area, and, uh, and of course, our website. We're uh, beginning to uh, work up a conversation on Main Street. If you recall, we have received about a two, a two and a half million dollar uh, grant from uh, the state and the federal government, uh, STP funds, and that is for the complete reconstruction of Main Street from Van Nortwick to uh, Batavia Avenue, and we're extending some work all the way to Water Street. Um, there will be a, um, uh, sometime on the week of May 15th, there will be a public um, open house here where people can see the different cross sections that are possible for that street. On April 23rd, we will be making a presentation to both uh, community development and city services on those cross sections with a, uh, hopefully a uh, determination or recommendation to be made by the city council uh, late in May in time for a mandatory June meeting with the Federal Highway Administration. We're really trying to uh, keep this project uh, going forward so that it occurs in 2016. We're kind of on the bubble um, between 2016 and 2017. Um, we're, um, there's a lot of elements that are uh, need to be balanced here, and those include um, trees, no trees, how wide parkways are, um, bike lanes, parking on one side of the street, parking on both sides of the street, extra wide sidewalks to handle bicycles, multi-use path instead of extra wide bicycles and a bike path on the street. So there's going to be uh, uh, a lot of conversation uh, um, to be had. Um, we're planning our orientation with the, uh, with the uh, new members of the council. Uh, we'll have details out soon when we receive all their contact information. Generally, of course, it's a orientation is about a full day to visit all our city facilities and meet with uh, department heads. Uh, they do all have email. We've been copying them on all um, uh, non-confidential uh, information so they can kind of be uh, up to speed. Um, having said that, I, I will, I said a couple of months ago, I think it's very appropriate, especially with the, uh, after the election, to schedule a retreat. So I think we we'll, we'll, can't talk about that specifically, of course, for a couple of meetings, but um, I think if people could start thinking about the end of June, perhaps, but before July 4th, I think that's following all graduation activities. Um, I've s discussed this with the mayor. He thinks it would be quite, quite valuable. Um, our audit is uh, not finished, but uh, they finished all the on-site work. We should be seeing some, uh, some work uh, within a month or so. The deadline for filing our audit with the state is June 30th. Um, I'm pleased to let you know that city services will be reviewing the 2013 sidewalk program, the pavement preservation and crack sealing programs. Um, on the 23rd, I appreciate engineering and uh, Street Division of Public Works for bringing this to the council so early in the year. I think it's very helpful to the community. Um, just as a side note, uh, we are going to be, because the uh, bids came back higher than we thought for the sidewalk program, we will be pulling or recommending that we pull the Spring Street sidewalks uh, off of that contract because it was a source of some, um, some discussion. Those sidewalks are covered, however, in a, in a grant uh, application we have into uh, Kane County, which, if awarded in full, would help us with a lot of sidewalks on that entire, uh, the two blocks east of uh, River Street uh, going far north. Um, and lastly, thanks Public Works for uh, work on the waste contract. I think it turned out re really good for the, the, the community. So, and that's all I have, Mayor. Any questions of the administrator? Thank you. Thank you.
Committee reports, community development, Alderman Brown, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Plan Commission for this coming Wednesday is scheduled for 7.30. On their agenda is the public hearing for the comprehensive plan update. Uh, HPC has got a meeting scheduled for April 22nd at 5.30. Right now there are no items on their agenda, so the meeting is scheduled, but it may be canceled before uh, Friday evening. CDC and City Services will be holding a joint meeting on April 23rd at 7.30. Uh, CDC's agenda will include the comprehensive plan update, resolution 13-56-R, River Street deed acceptance for River and Wilson Art Stop, resolution 13-53-R, lot 37, which is a detention area at the Fox Trails South deed acceptance, and Main Street project status update, as our city administrator just mentioned, in advance of the public uh, open house on uh, the third week of May. That's all I have, Your Honor. Services, Alderman Sparks. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, government service has a meeting at 7.30 on April 22nd. We'll be discussing Ordinance 13-21, Community Development Ordinance Enforcement Authority, and we'll be discussing personnel. Thank you. City Services, Alderman Vogt, Chairman, please. Thank you, Your Honor. There will be a joint City Services CDC meeting next Tuesday, April 23rd, 7.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers. There are three items on the agenda for City Services. As we mentioned, the 2013 sidewalk program, the pavement preservation program, and the pavement crack sealing program. These are fairly straightforward workaday sorts of things. I hope they're early on the agenda. We can just pass them and move on to more important stuff. And again, I have observed many brush piles out on the curbs. The city does not pick up brush in April anymore. We picked them up May through November. Please don't pile them on the curb. You're going to end up with dead grass. Thank you. Public Utilities, Alderman Frightendahl. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. We will meet tomorrow night at 7.30 here in the Council Chambers. On the agenda will be Resolution 1361R, Contract for Wastewater Treatment Facility Improvements to uh, Man Manuso's uh, General Contracting. Uh, Resolution 1362R, Contract for uh, Diffuser Membrane Replacement to Hayes Mechanical. Resolution 1360R, authorizing uh, certain elected officials and staff to receive confidential information <coughs> regarding Prairie States. And Resolution 1359R, authorizing task order number five with HBK Engineering. And anything else that might come before the committee. All right, 16 other business, Alderman Chancet. Um, Your Honor uh, and Council, I, I met with some protesters uh, that were uh, speaking um, at the front steps of River Street uh, recently, and I spent time really, truly listening to um, what their concerns were, and I found out some interesting things. I did find out that very few people understand the intricacies of municipal finance. I found out that people believe uh, that the project uh, costs too much. And that some people are concerned that this particular design is awful. Uh, the truth is, we have discussed this matter for quite some time. Um, but there still is a perception out there in the public among some that uh, this council is not listening. And with uh, due respect to uh, uh, this recent election, it was a dramatic election. And here is a chance to show the community that uh, we are listening to them. So I guess I would ask. Uh, that this council would consider uh, sending back to committee uh, the arch uh, for some additional discussion. I do respect the finality of the vote that we did just have, um, but based on some of this outcry, um, I just think it makes sense uh, to review this contract. I'm happy that paragraph 20 allows us that opportunity to put the brakes on for just a moment, revisit, and I certainly would respect uh, if the committee determined that no action was necessary um, than to let our vote stand as it, as it is. So I guess I would ask if any other council members would join me in, in, in that request to have the committee review it again. Can I support this since I voted in the negative in the first vote? Are you uh, asking me? Okay. Since you know th you're Mr. Parliamentary Procedure. <laughs> All right. um, okay. In order to reconsider a vote that's been taken, it, it has to be a motion has to be made by someone who voted in favor or on, on the on the uh, 
um, majority side. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, you couldn't make the motion. I suppose you could second it. Okay. Uh, the motion would have to be made by someone who was on the prevailing side. Okay. Thank you. Then I will second the motion. Has there been a motion made? Andrew, did you make a motion? I, I, w I was asking for us to read to reconsider it. There is one other issue, which is an Open Meetings Act issue, and that is we can't take action on something that's not on the agenda. Now, this is kind of a procedural thing, this motion to reconsider. Um, <clears throat> the Open Meetings Act doesn't really distinguish between something that's procedural and something that's substantive, for instance, voting on the contract itself. Um, my opinion on that because I don't think there's any case law, is, is that we could probably vote on the whether to reconsider. If the vote's in favor of reconsidering, we would have to um, actually reconsider at the next meeting and put the matter on the agenda. Uh, Judging by the silence that I heard, it doesn't sound like there's any interest to reconsider this, but I, I guess I, I would procedurally make that motion because it just feels right in my heart after speaking uh, to protesters that their voice absolutely must be heard. So I make that motion. And now I'll second it. Can we have discussion? Sure. I was under the impression that we could not reconsider this contract. Actually that, that is an issue as well. Um, we, we've adopted Robert's rules uh, as the uh, procedures for the meeting. That, that govern the meeting in the absence of any statutory rules or other local rules that apply. And under Robert's rules, if a matter has been decided and partially executed, it isn't subject to reconsideration. So for instance, in this situation, uh, it was a, uh, a contract and the contract has been executed. I think it, I, the contract was executed on the 20th or something like that. So in that circumstance, as a matter of procedure, uh, it can't be reconsidered. Can there be a change order to the contract? Well, it, it becomes an issue governed by the contract. So we would have to look at the terms of the contract in, cons in, in determining whether there's an out. Now, We'd be making a substantive argument then at that point saying, We've spent this much money on the design. We've spent this much money on the drawings. If we were to cancel this contract, it's going to cost us. Right. There, there's, there's some provisions in the contract that allow the city to get out. And, um, and, and uh, Alderman Chance is right. Uh, there would be some cost to the city to get out because obviously the contractor has already put the wheels in motion. They've done a lot of work in terms of you know, preparing the, the, the design and gearing up to do the work. Uh, the work, uh, the contract actually requires a very fast pace. It has to be completely finished by May 13th, so as soon as the, it was approved, they hit the ground running. So we don't know what that cost would be, but there, there is some out in the contract language itself. Alderman Dietz. There is authority to, sus to suspend the rules. So obviously the rule is that uh, a motion to reconsider cannot be made uh, when something's been partially executed. Here we've got partial execution in obviously entering into the contract. So if the council were to vote to suspend the rules, we would be suspending that rule, which then as a matter of procedure would allow the council to, cons to reconsider.
I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Deed, second by Alderman Atec to suspend the rules, Robert's Rules of Orders, as it applies to this particular motion. Any discussion on that? Your Honor, I guess I would, I would only, I, this is a very slippery slope. I would only support that motion just to have the ability to have the discussion should we, we can't have the discussion should we without suspending that. So I would support it only under this narrow, narrow reading of that rule. Your Honor? I, I think this is the slipperiest of slopes that we are standing on the corner of right now. I, I can't imagine that in the 10 years that I've been on this council, there have been some extremely contentious votes, some extremely big issues that we have gone over, and we have never backed off of the vote that we have taken when the 14 of us have made a decision. We have never gone back and, re and reversed that. We're elected by the people to make these decisions. And when people are upset with that, they're never happy with design. We had people, not that it was us doing it, but we had people that were extremely distraught with the fact that we were spending $8.8 .8 million to build a library. It's a giant elephant, we'll never use it, it'll never be anything great for this town. It is probably the most used building in this entire city. We got blasted up and down when we built fire stations. 25, 30 years, 50 years from now, I'll still be proud that we built the fire stations that we built. You cannot design by committee. We have learned that. The 14 of us that are up here have learned how difficult that is. And every time we make a decision that has anything to do with design, somebody's going to be upset. There's always going to be a little minority that comes out very vocal at times and makes a statement that they don't want us to do it. They don't want us to spend the money. They don't want us to spend any money. But yet, when we have our surveys and we had our street state group, they wanted us to do something downtown. We have done that. We've spent two years. This plan has been out there for at least two years. The pictures of this exact arch that we're proposing have been on the web for one year, almost to the day. It has been out there. It has been discussed more than I can imagine. I am sorry that some people have not paid attention to what is going on in their county, in their, in their city government. We had roughly 13% of the registered voters vote in this last election. So we have 13% of the people making the decision of who's going to be up here to vote. That to me is the saddest part of this entire thing, is that every one of those people that has the ability to vote and pays their taxes is not voting. You entrust that to us and we're trying to do the right thing and coming in at the last second to try to stop it I think is the worst possible thing that we could do and to back up and tell the contractor we're not going to do this. I can't imagine who's going to want to come in and bid on anything in the city. If we did that with our garbage contract two weeks from now because we decided we didn't like the color of the toters. Somebody doesn't like them. Somebody doesn't want to have to roll that thing out to the curb. We're not going to do that. And I don't think in my heart that that is something that we need to go back and reconsider. I'm sure that there's going to be people out there that are wild about this. I'm sure that there are going to be people out for the rest of their lives that will say this is the worst thing we ever did. But you know what? We are trying to make something happen downtown. This is going to be a place that's going to explode over the next 10 years. I just about guarantee you, the nine businesses that are in there now in the last year, I tell anybody to try to show me a place in this town where we've spent money that hasn't brought something like this has happened. The only other place that we've spent any money that's really done anything is Water Street. I just can't go back and, you know, I've heard a lot from both sides, and I think we're doing the right thing, and I think we need to move forward. Thank you. Um, um, I support everything you said. Um, I was under the impression that Dan was looking for discussion, and I think this is the sort of discussion that we need to have. Um, I agree with you. My concern is moving forward. You know, you talked about 11th hour concerns. How are we going to move forward with future streetscapes if this may happen again? How are we going to prevent this from happening? I think this is the kind of discussion that we need to have. 
take that a step further, we need to change the perception out there that we aren't listening because there is a lot to talk about and there are a lot of meetings. And this particular meeting is very well attended, but I can't count the number of meetings that I look out and I wonder, are we in executive session? It doesn't matter, there's nobody in the audience to hear what we're saying. Okay, we have a motion and second on the floor to suspend the rules for discussion or from the contract for the arch. Kirk, call the roll. Deeds? Aye. Jungles? No. Volk? No. Frydendahl? No. Leva? No. Tenuta? No. Brown? No. Clark? No. Atac? No. Stark? Yes. Chansit? Yes. Wool? No. Sparks? No. Okay, the vote is 10 no, 3 yes, and 1 absent. Thank you for the time listing. I appreciate it. Anybody else on other business from the city council? Okay, matters from the public. Does anybody wish to address the city council? Yvonne? Yvonne, would you give us your name and address for the court, sure. please? My name is Yvonne Dunwitty, 1156 Pine Street in Batavia. And I did vote, and I have kept track of this, and I have stood in front of this council, and I have complained about the bricks and some of the other things that are going on. And I do understand, I was on the Waste Transfer Station Committee, and uh, people, again, there was, there was public information out there in the press, but the communication with the public is lacking. And if you don't understand that, you need to take a better look. Now, one of the things that frustrates me, and I know it frustrates a lot of these other people, is when we come to a city council meeting, it appears that all the decisions have already been made. And the reason is because the discussions are not done at the council meeting, they're done at committee level, which are not broadcast at BATV. And a lot of these people in town are working, they're working their butts off. We have all these homes in foreclosure in the city. And so we can't attend all these council meetings and all the school board meetings. When we elect somebody to represent us, we expect them to represent us, not to vote their conscience. We expect them to vote for us. And that isn't happening across the board here. Um, I know, you know, I'm, pretty vocal, but there are a lot of other people who are afraid to speak up because of some of the things that happen when they do. Um, there are bullies around and, um, you know, things like that happen. But I think that we need to have better communication. Maybe better than spending $117,000 on an arch, it would be better to spend $117,000 on a sign out there that would announce what the council meetings are or when the committee meetings are and some of the subjects that are going to be on there so that people will know when the meetings are and when they're driving through town they can see oh we're, we're going to vote on sidewalks or we're going to vote on waste uh, pickups. Um, I read the articles, I read all the papers, I read all of the, the um, legal notices and when I read about the um, garbage, dis the, the those garbage bins, my first impression was, well, now are we going to have to pay for recyclables again? And I was asking our um, alderman, Mr. Sparks, well, does that mean we're going to have to pay for recyclables? The information is not there. If we can't figure out what we're going to do or what we're supposed to do, then the information isn't there. So I would suggest that you work a little harder on communicating with the people in more detail. Would you give your name and address for the clerk, please? Yeah, Rob Hollis, 1108 Sarah Court here in Batavia. I just wanted to thank uh, Alderman Chancic for coming out and listening. <laughs> uh, for coming out and listening and uh, going out on a limb here a little bit tonight. I appreciate it, and you earn my respect. Could you give us your name and address for the clerk, please? 
My name is Michelle Olache, and um, I'm at 407 Woodland Hills Road in Batavia. And um, I just want to take uh, a moment to say that this that the rally started um, because my two sons came last city council meeting for a merit badge for Boy Scouts. And um, they came home, and I asked them, well, what happened? Because my husband brought them. And they said, well, we didn't understand anything because there were a lot of numbers thrown around. But we did understand that there's some kind of an arch coming on River Street, and it's going to cost $117,000, and it's well over budget. And I got on the phone with some people in my um, ward and said, do you guys know anything about this? No one knew anything about it. And um, so that's kind of the, where this rally came about. Um, and in the process, I've learned a lot about city government and talking to um, Alderman Chancet and talking to Alderman Sparks today. And um, I have to agree with Yvonne. I don't think the information is getting out there. I can honestly say, you know, it's my fault as a citizen. I'm not aware. I'm at home raising my five kids and trying to pay all these taxes. Um, and so I would encourage you, one suggestion that um, Alderman uh, Sparks mentioned today is that he and um, Alderman O'Brien are talking about sending out email blitzes to the people in our ward. And I would so very much appreciate that, to know what is coming up so that I can give you my opinion about it. Because I just can't keep up with all of the information and try to raise a family at the same time. So that may be just one avenue of getting information out to us. Um, because I don't think it should be a you versus us and us versus you. I would very much like for you guys to be representative of our opinion since we're, we're voting you into office and I know that it's only 13% of us voting, but um, I would really ask that, that you try your best. I've looked on the city website. I don't see the arch shown there. I had to go to um, Batavia Patch to find uh, what the arch will look like. Um, I couldn't find minutes for the upcoming meetings. Um, I was told that those would be on the, you know, every Friday those are updated so that the new minutes will be shown. I couldn't find any minutes. Um, so I would appreciate getting more information uh, via email or, as Yvonne suggested, a sign, um, making the website friendlier perhaps. Um, those would just be some suggestions. Thank you. Paul McCark. I just wanted to let the residents know. <laughs> I just want to let the residents know that they can go to the city website and sign up and you get a weekly email. I get it. I signed up. Even though I'm very well aware of what's going on, it's an, a weekly email of all the upcoming minutes of the meetings. It has links to all the memos. So that's one way. I mean, I, I'd have to look at our website to find out what the, what the actual link is, but you can sign up for Batavia E-News. Um, it's very effective. So I would suggest that that's a way of, of getting the communication that you're looking for. Thank you. I want to just say I appreciate the dialogue we've had here tonight. Uh, it's, it's an interesting conversation to have, uh, given the fact that we've had in, at the city, we've had an, a number of other cities come to Batavia in the last two or three years to kind of oversee and look to how we communicate with our public because the conception is is that we do a lot of things a lot of other people don't do. We're one of the few cities in the area that broadcasts our city council minutes, minutes or meetings live on TV. Uh, we also publish Neighbors Magazine, and I don't know how many copies of that I have given away to other cities. I bet you half the cities in Cook County I've given copies of Neighbors Magazine to because they think it's a very interesting tool to try to communicate with folks. And we do have, you know, a pretty extensive website. Uh, I apparently we have some failures with it, but you know, I, the city certainly is not trying to hide anything here. Uh, as Alderman Clark has just indicated, we do have that website that you can be tuned into on a weekly basis. Uh, so, this, if 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 in fact we can communicate better, I think that's the city's desire and goal. But certainly, we've got other cities coming into Batavia looking at how we're doing it because. We're doing a lot of stuff that a lot of other people aren't doing as far as communicating with our public. This TV thing is, uh, you know, I, I have jokingly, or not, I don't know if it's jokingly, but I've had a number of other aldermen and councilmen and from other communities say, boy, I don't, don't think I'd like to have the, the TV camera in my council chambers. And I say, you know, once we turned it on, it's just taken for granted and it's if you you know, blow your nose or fall asleep or whatever is going to happen, it's there and it's there for everybody to see. So maybe 
it keeps everybody maybe awake, but it also, I think, allows the community to understand what it is we're down here talking about. So uh, th there is, a, hopefully, you know, the idea that we can communicate better. That's, I think the city is always open to that, and we would certainly welcome any suggestions that anybody would have. May I say a word? Certainly. Thank you. I, I kind of sit in a unique position here. Um, I represent the council. I'm not elected. I don't make the hard decisions that these folks have to make. Um, but I, I'm also kind of on the other side, too. I represent businesses. I represent other communities. So I can compare this, the city of Batavia to other communities that I represent and some that I don't, but that I have uh, involvement with through private business. And um, what I've seen here in the city of Batavia, in spite of some of the tensions that we've experienced in the last few months with the election, and oftentimes elections bring those tensions because that's when things come bubbling up to the surface, is that really the city of Batavia is, is really a unique place. And even though we have some of those tensions and some of those growing pains, um, it's not nearly the way it is in, in other communities where there's real division. And, and I think you know, everyone sitting in the audience and everyone sitting up here is really to be congratulated about that. We're going to have diff differences and differences of, of opinion that is unavoidable, unavoidable. But one thing that I see is that when these folks are wrestling through the decisions that they have to make, they're looking for input. They're, they're looking for, uh, you know, so I often hear the people say as they talk, you know, I've heard from three people and this is what they've said, or I've, you know, my, I was talking to my neighbor and this is what my neighbor said. So they, they, they are listening. Um, you know, it's kind of a two-way street and it has to be kind of a dialogue and it can't be an us against them if we're going to have a community. Uh, when things, when they make decisions and then there's a backlash, those, those are, diff that's difficult. That, that's, that's hard. The decision's already been made, so the, the council's kind of vested in it at that point. Uh, the dialogue really needs to happen earlier, and part of that is communication. And part of that, in looking at the city website, there's so much up on the city website. The agendas are always up ahead of time. The materials are available through the website online ahead of time, not just the agendas. In most communities, you have to go down to City Hall and ask for them to make a, a paper copy for you of all the materials that are being considered by the, by the city. That isn't true here in Batavia. It's available on, on your computer from your home. And maybe it's just a matter of, uh, you know, learning how to access it and where it is and, and you know, sign up for the email, but it's, it's there, uh, and it really is a lot better than in, in a lot of communities. Alderman Freindahl? Your Honor, I just have one comment to make. I, I read the agenda for uh, tomorrow night's meeting, but if you go to cityofbatavia.net, you will see everything that I read in more detail with a click on to the entire memos that the city council will see. So everything is there for tomorrow night. Something that I did not mention is awarding the contract for the wastewater treatment facility improvement is for an amount not to exceed $838,768. I wonder how many people will be here to talk about the wastewater treatment plant. Go on down to uh, membrane replacement uh, uh, at $60,733 a memo uh, authorizing certain elected officials and staff to receive confidential information related to Prairie States. There is a memo on that, and you can read the entire memo that the City Council sees. Authorizing Task Force Number 5, um, $27,300. A lot of money is being discussed tomorrow night. And I, it's, you know, I keep hearing that we're we don't we're not transparent. I don't know when I when I went around talking to people, I can't believe how many people didn't read information that I sent out. Didn't even know they got it. I mean it's it's the trend today 
and there's just a negative attitude throughout this country that I think we all need to get more involved in our city governments. We need to get more involved in our national and, uh, government and our state government. There is a letter out from the APPA um, uh, last week that's beware of what's happening in, in Washington because financing for municipal <coughs> bonds uh, uh, is going to increase. The BABs have not been reapproved. All of that, according to the APPA, is going to have a direct effect on the municipal, everything they do, and particularly in the American Public Power Association. These are the kinds of things that we live with here, and, and I appreciate uh, people coming in uh, and, and voicing their opinions, but let's get the opinions up front and not after the fact. Thank you. Your Honor, I just for the benefit of the citizens, when you go to the City of Batavia website, which is www.cityofbatavia.net, click on the heading that says government. Underneath that, click on the heading that says meeting calendars. There will be hyperlinks to all of the agendas, and for past meetings, you'll also have hyperlinks to the minutes from those meetings if you want to know. Also, Alderman Clark, if you go on the front page there of the website, Batavia E News is in the right hand corner. It's got the little picture of the mouse, so you can just click on that and sign up. As a representative of BATV, I have really pushed to get as much content as possible out there on BATV. It is also available on the BATV website, archived, any of the meetings that we have, and available if there isn't one on there that you so desire to get. You can always go in and ask for that at the BATV studio, and then the council um, meeting uh, are on the website, on B uh, the City of Batavia website and also the municipal minutes, which is one of the ways that we've tried to increase transparency by getting somebody from the city staff at some level to talk about what's going on, to talk about the street program. I mean, we had somebody from the construction crew once a week that was doing that for a while. I mean, we're really trying to make sure that we get this out there. I know that there's always ways to get better, so give us your suggestions. I'm not here, you know, to tell people no, but we have to be able to communicate and we have to have some finality when we make a decision. Thank you. Well, let me, Steve, did you want to speak? Would you? <coughs> Hi, I'm Steve Vassilian, 426 Illinois. Um, respectfully, I'd like to disagree with, with um, some of the comments I, that, I, that I've heard about the transparency and the welcoming of opposing opinions. Um, I've attended a number of council meetings over the last few months, and time and again, it, it seems to me that, that anybody that comes up to speak, the message that comes back is, you're too late, and, and it, nothing can be changed, that you should have spoken two or three years ago. And it may be true, I don't know how long the, the image of the, of the arch has been on the website, but having the image and having the updated price tag, both of those things side by side is recent. And it's only been in the last month or two, I'm not sure exactly when, that people could look at the price tag, look at the arch, and make a value decision on whether they like it or not. And to, to constantly be telling people that it's too late, to me, sends the wrong message. My mom and dad told me it's never too late to do the right thing. And so, you know, I looked through the contract that, that's here, and there are a number of ways that, that this contract can be exited with very little consequence to the city. We've already mentioned that, that there's a, a right to terminate by, by, by your convenience, which you can choose to do if you want to. Uh, the company is also su uh, supposed to provide a certificate of insurance, and no work is to begin until that certificate has been submitted and approved. And I don't know, has that certificate been submitted? Has it been approved by the city? Because if it hasn't, then no work can legally be done uh, up until this point. Typically, when construction drawings are done, shop drawings are, are, are prepared. And those shop drawings need to be reviewed and approved before materials can be ordered. I don't know, have shop drawings uh, been submitted and, and approved? I mean, to me, there's a number of, of 
ways that, that if we wanted to take a step back, we could do so. And, and that we don't have an ominous heavy price tag over our head if we, if we choose to change our minds. So that's why the last meeting I asked if you please go back to your constituents and ask them what they think. You keep saying you want to hear what people say, you want people to come forward, but people that come forward in council meetings often get, get, get criticized. Uh, if you went to your constituents and asked, I talked to hundreds of people uh, uh, during my, my recent walks, and I didn't find anybody who was in favor of this. And I appreciate that you want to make a bold statement. I appreciate that you want to move forward and you want to do something that's going to put us on the map. But bold doesn't necessarily equate to spending more money. Uh, it's not too late to reconsider. It's not too late to do the right thing. Suspending the, 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 the Robert's rule so that you can have the discussion, well, what really is that going to cost you? Uh, have the debate, have the discussion, listen to your constituents and see if there's a different opinion. Thank you very much. Your Honor. Sir, <laughs> Sir, did you want to make, you'd come up, did you want to, if you'd come up and give us your name and address for the clerk, please? Your Honor, while he's on his way up, I'd like to just address Steve so we have the open dialogue. It's my understanding was with talking to our city attorney, or not our city attorney, our city engineer, the certificate of appropriate, or the um, insurance certificate has been submitted and approved. The shop drawings have been submitted and approved. So all that is not something that is up for discussion. Okay. Well, can I get one quick clarification in here? Originally, we had $95,000 95.5 in the Leopardo pre-construction memo here. We reduced that to 55,000 on, I think, our engineer's design that it was going to cost less. All right. Anybody else? Carl? I can put on my citizen jacket here. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, I'll start. First of all, I've... Um, complimented uh, the city on the budget and the transparency. In fact, I've spoke at different uh, government bodies in the city, and I said, you want to see a good budget? You want to see a transparent budget? Go look at the city of Batavia's budget. I can see where every dollar is going. Uh, on the subject of communications, which just seems to be a lot about, I was a uh, naval officer for many years. I had to communicate and manage. I was a federal manager for 25 years. And one of the things I used to tell all the people, I bet it's possible to over-communicate, but I've never seen it happen. So we do have a challenge here. The other thing, I'm trying to think, one of the tenets of total quality management is continuous improvement. And I think I've heard some of the uh, councilmen already, they're, they're seem committed, we're going to work harder and look at other ways. And BATV, I've complimented Holly many times. I don't know of any city that gets to see as much of their government as we do in Batavia. And in fact, I've even added, if you ever have any issues about the survival of BATV, come see me because I will be a strong supporter. A thought I had as we were talking about that, maybe we could test uh, uh, showing a few of the committee meetings. I know if you're going to have the city council meeting every day for 21 days, maybe we can skip a day or two and throw in some committee meetings and just on a trial basis and see how it's uh, received. The last thing on communication, I get uh, the Hulkren, uh, yeah, the Hulkren huddle, the Kirk something or other, and I'm very pleased to hear that my alderman is considering like a mass email, uh, just update on what's going on in our ward and what uh, they think we might need to know as citizens. So there's challenges, America's challenges, and with Mr. Frydendahl, I definitely agree with him. America and the citizens need to get involved. I think a lot of where we're at today is because the citizens just said, let George do it, and they didn't get involved. And um, I don't see things changing unless the citizens speak up and get involved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving to item 18, the mayor's. Oh, sorry. 
Ron Reckenmacher, 415 Grove Court. And uh, just one real quick thing, the um, e-news that gets sent out doesn't have the links. It just has that there's going to be a meeting. So it would be a great thing to have the links added. Just point of clarification. Pardon? Isn't the e-news out before the agendas? Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's... It's on Friday. Hmm? It's on Friday. It's on Friday. It's on Friday. The agenda okay, so they're about equal. the link right on it. But the agenda does have the link, yes. so yes. that's... Okay, we're going to 18, the mayor's report. Uh, I, I, cert I had planned to talk about this tonight, and I guess it's kind of apropos to what we've just been discussing. Uh, obviously, we had the election last week, and it, as the election unfolded, what we're going to have here in the next meeting is we're going to have six new members on the north side of the room. Uh, They're going to be participating in the, de the decisions of the city council. We have traditionally had a four member or four uh, divided four session committee program in the city of Batavia where we have community development, government services, city services, and public utilities. And I think that system has worked well for us. Uh, it's allowed us to have, uh, as it's already been said here tonight, a number of discussions are always the heavy duty discussions and the heavy duty debates generally take place at the committee process, and that's where. Uh, people understand what's going on and what is is not going to happen and what is going to happen. I've talked with a couple of the folks who have been elected to the city council who will take office at the next meeting, and several of them have told me that they had questions on what were the duties of certain committees and how the committees functioned. So I'm going to make the suggestion, and it's certainly going to be the decision of the city council as to what you would like to do with this. But I'm going to make the suggestion that uh, we pick up on and at least try what is now being done in our neighboring communities to the north, and I believe also North Aurora is doing it, that we take every Monday night and the first and the third Mondays we have as the regular city council meeting because that's published and that has to be by law. And on the second and the fourth Mondays, we turn that into the committee meeting night. And uh, some city councils call this the committee of the whole and they let all the members of the city council sit on every one of the committees. Now, if it's a decision of all of you and you want to do that, that's all well and good. But what I would suggest as an initial step here is that we keep the four, four section committees that we currently have and that we, as you know, that the way we have divided this up is, is that we have seven members on each committee and we ask that at least one alderman from each ward serve on every committee so that there's no committee discussion that takes place that doesn't have a voice sitting at it from somebody from that particular ward. What we would like to do uh, then, what I would like to see it then do is allow everybody on the city council, let's say, I, I would propose that we do this starting in the, in the first meeting in May and then go through the end of this year and do, uh, do a kind of a trial and see if this works, if it's something that does work. In other words, uh, maybe on one Monday night we would have public utilities and city services. And the other Monday night we would have the other two, or if we don't have any business, maybe we can run them all together on the same night. Uh, maybe we're going to find out that we got more business than we got nights for, and we're going to have to extend it out. But I think this would give all the new people on the city council the opportunity to kind of attend all the committee meetings, hear all the dialogue that's going on, uh, understand everything that's being said, and then get their, their kind of their feet wet as to what they would or would not like to serve on as, as far as a city council committee. So what I guess I'd like to suggest is, is that we'll appoint uh, new committees at the next meeting. Again, I would ask that the two aldermen from each ward get together and that you decide amongst yourself uh, which committees the two of you would like to serve on so that we've got somebody on every one of the four committees and that but that you be expected that the second and fourth Mondays of every month you're going to come down here and attend whatever committees we got an agenda for that's going to have some business before it and I, I just think it maybe would make for stronger understanding on the parts of the City Council maybe we can even get BATV to come down and broadcast the committee meetings then on the second and fourth Mondays so that the committee meetings will now be on TV for anybody in the community that would like to see the committee meetings. Uh, it is amazing to me the number of people who call up the next day or I see someplace in the community who say to me, 
gee, I really appreciate the fact that I can sit home at night and watch this on TV, or if I missed it, it's replayed uh, subsequently on subsequent other dates and times. So I was able to see the debate on X item or, or hear the discussion about what was said about this or that. Uh, you know, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to hopefully let us reach out into the community. Obviously, we need to do a better job than we are doing, and I just think that this would be one way that will allow us to better communicate amongst ourselves, specifically with uh, six new members coming on the city council. So, I mean, if you don't, I've already had some people tell me they don't know if they think this is a good idea or not, but I think we should try it. Uh, I will tell you that talking to our peers in Geneva and St. Charles, they swear by it. They, most of the aldermen up there that I've talked to tell me they think it's a good overall exercise and it gives them the exposure to all the discussions about what is taking place on any committee. Now, as it's already been pointed out to me, if you really want to come, you can come to, if we have the committee meetings on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, or Thursday night, you can come to those meetings. But this would be a designated time and we would specifically set Monday nights apart for the first and third for the city council meetings and the second and fourth for the committee meetings. And we would see how much of the business we get. Alderman Brown? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I appreciate you bringing this up, and I know you and I have discussed this. Um, and I obviously value your opinion on this um, and respect what you have to say. I, I will support it. I will go along with it, with it being a trial basis that uh, we should try it. Um, I'm a little bit bothered by the fact that I'm hearing that, you know, to give the other aldermen an opportunity to catch up on what's going on because when I first got on city council, I, I went to every meeting. That's what I knew I was getting myself into. I went to every meeting until I felt like I was up to speed on what was going on in the city. And then I also respected the committee structure that we had built or that was there before I got on that we trusted and, and respected our counterpart in our ward to sit on the other committee to make the right decision for our ward and for our city so that we didn't have to be at every meeting. If there was something I was uh, intricately interested in or concerned about, either I would go to that meeting or I would ask my fellow aldermen to speak what I had to say. Um, but I, it, having said that, I will, I will still support what you're suggesting. I am concerned that, as you know, I'm the chairman of CDC, and even though the committee meetings are not public hearings, they're public meetings, um, as I've said many a times in our, in our committee meetings, this is the only time because of the Public Meeting Act, the Open Meeting Act, that the group of us can sit and discuss and, and hammer things out. For anyone on the TV that's not listening or doesn't know, um, you, we cannot meet more than two of us at one time. So if three of us want to get together out of the 14 on a Saturday morning at Panera and discuss an issue coming up, discuss something that we're hearing from our citizens, we can't do it. So the only time we can do that is at the committee meetings. So sometimes we have a tendency to, as we are doing here tonight, just kind of ramble on and batter ideas back and forth about what we think. And the only way we can do that is at these committee meetings. So as I was starting to say, being chairman of CDC, I have, a, I, I have never ever in the time I've been chair uh, prohibited or, or said to anyone that they couldn't speak at the committee meetings, even though I would have that ability and so would any other chairman to do that. As, as I just explained, that's why we have the committee meetings so that we have our time to have these discussions. So consequently, Sometimes I get uh, criticized a little bit by some other fellow aldermen because my committee meetings end up going until 10.30 at night. We have some very important things going on in this town, just in my committee, along with public utilities and city services and everything else, where, for example, streetscape and arches and things like that. I mean, Susan, we have debated arches back and forth until we were ready to choke each other. Um, and those meetings have gone on to the late hours of the night. So I'm really kind of concerned that this committee of a whole, I just hope we don't start rubber stamping things because it's getting late in the night and we want to get out of there. Uh, we, after, after 10 o'clock at night, we start thinking about where we're gonna be the next morning to five o'clock in the morning and we want to just get the heck out of there. So I, I'm concerned about that. I'm willing to give it a chance. Let's see what happens. It might be the best thing since sliced bread. That's 
why I'm suggesting it not be a permanent fix till we try it and see if it works. I mean, I totally agree with you. I think it has some issues that have to be overcome. Alderman Chancet? Just very briefly, the committee is where the sausage is made, and the more opportunities to make sausage seems like a good idea. So that's my only objection to the committee of the whole. As we discussed before the meeting, um, this our committees, the council, has a tendency to like from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, you see the energy level start to slide. Anything past 10 o'clock, we have a bunch of members that start looking at their watch going, I'm going home and going to bed now. Um, and I know from talking to aldermen in other cities that some of their meetings go till midnight because there's a lot to discuss. And so I honestly, you know, I know several aldermen have to commute. They get up early. I know, I mean, we all have jobs other than the city council. And so that's why it really concerns me to think about meetings um, that go much past 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. And then to say, okay, well, then we'll just ha add another meeting in the month. Well, suddenly we are back to the original system we had. So why deviate from that system? That's where my concern comes in. I mean, I'm willing to try it. But I also, you know, like Dave said, I worry that we're going to be in the, um, in time, to try to stay timely, to try to stay so that we're not here till midnight. We're going to start going, okay, we don't have to put much attention or focus on that. Let's just, you know, let's move on. Let's move on. And, and I really open those long discussions that we do have about arches and power and totes and sidewalks. So. I mean, I think those are all the things we have to explore in the concept. That's why I'm not necessarily saying this is the way it should be done. I, you, you will, uh, I call this a, probably an experiment that we are going to undertake to see if, if it works. But I feel that with six new people coming on, it's just going to be a good learning curve for them to be able to sit here and listen to all the committees. And granted, I think most all of them probably come to all the committee meetings anyway. But this way, we have a designated night, and we will try to see what we can, how much of this can work. I've, other places say it works well. If it doesn't, first of January, we go back to the way we're doing it as far as. It'll be a lot easier for me to count up how many meetings we have every year. Right. <laughs> 12 times four. Absolutely. All right, enough on that one. The other, only other thing I just want to say is, is that on before our next city council meeting, which is going to be the 6th of May, is going to be the 5th of May, which is Sunday, and that's going to be the Batavia VFW Post Loyalty Day Parade. And we want to extend an invitation to all the newly elected aldermen, along with all those who are currently serving, because everybody that's still on the council will still be with us on that date, to participate in March in the Loyalty Day Parade, if you so feel. Them. And as we've done in the past, we kind of make it a family thing. So if you've got spouse or children or a nice dog or whatever you'd like to have we've had we've had it all there so it's just uh, kind of a, all of us out there so the community can see us and uh, I plan to be there so I would encourage you to uh, if somebody will come and walk with me and I appreciate the company if nothing else so absolutely absolutely <laughs> Yvonne and Carl are there every year faithfully taking pictures of the whole thing so uh, Again, I'd extend the invitation to all the newly elected aldermen and to all those who are currently in office. So, okay, that being said, I, we need to have a motion for a brief executive session to discuss personnel. Uh, so if somebody would so move, make that motion. So moved. Have a motion, do I have second. Se second? Motion and second for the personnel. For our city Council enter executive session to discuss personnel. Kurt, please Your call the- Your Honor, oh. before we take the vote, I would like like another alderman to join me to invite the alderman elect to stay for the executive session that has always been our tradition. Okay. I would join you. All right. We got alderman elect. If you would stay in the room, please. You got to learn the secret handshake sooner or later. You might as well stay. <laughs> Can we take the executive session vote now? Yeah, call, call the take the vote. Okay. Stark. Uh, Aye. <laughs> We're voting on entering executive session. Yeah, okay. I yes. had to stop and think what Chance was it? Again. Aye. Wolf? Aye. Sparks? Aye. O'Brien? He's not here. Oh, oh he's not here. Deeds? <laughs> louder. He's not here. I can't hear him. We'll come back. Jungles? Aye. Hulk? Aye. Frydendahl? Aye. As well, Wolf. Leva? Aye. Tenuta? Aye. Brown? Aye. Clark? Aye. Atac? Aye. And Alderman Deeds, are you with us? He said aye. Okay, he is. Okay. 